Okay, I read a disturbing story uh, this weekend, and I don't know if it hit your radar at all. But as you know, I have been warning about a few things. In the last 20 years, I have warned about Islamic extremism. I have uh, warned about people like George Soros and this cabal that is a collection of globalists that are going to try to destroy America for what it is and then take charge of it themselves. That is called the Great Reset. Uh, I have warned you about the economy and the economic collapse that we are now seeing. The third, the fourth thing that I've really been warning you about uh, from time to time, the thing that really keeps me up at night, one of them, is AI, A-G-I, and A-S-I. Most people know artificial intelligence, but that artificial intelligence is it the reason why, for instance, Watson, uh, which is another horrifying story, but Watson is an IBM program that runs in, on a computer, and they are using it currently in New York. And I'm telling you, by 2030, you will not ask your doctor for the diagnosis. You will ask your doctor, yep, yeah, what did the computer say? Because the computer will be able to have everything, every case ever done and it will be in the computer and it will be updated with the latest stuff and you'll be able to go in and get a scan or a blood test and they're trying to figure out what it is you're not going to have to go to doctor after doctor after doctor because the computer will have absolutely everything in it every case and it will be ai so it can kind of think on its own when it comes to medicine So AI is something that is artificial intelligence that will be greater than uh, uh, human or soon greater than all humans, all human minds combined in one program. That's artificial intelligence. We are not artificial intelligence. Well, I mean, some people are, but uh, mainly those people who are on TV. But artificial intelligence um, is different than artificial general intelligence, We are natural general intelligence, meaning we can do a lot of things. Uh, There's a lot of things we can't do. But for instance, um, I'm pretty good at radio. I'm pretty good at television. I'm um, pretty good at, uh, at art. I'm not good, let's say, at sports. But a lot of people can be really good at a few things and kinda good on just about everything. That's general intelligence. When artificial general intelligence comes, it can piece things together across the spectrum. So that's where you get philosophy. That's where you see, well, wait a minute, if that is true over here in this, then why doesn't that carry over here? When artificial general intelligence happens, we could be toast. We could live in a utopia, but we could also be Toast. If artificial general intelligence happens, and some people say it will never happen, uh, Ray Kurzweil is the most op- optimistic, and he says it will happen by 2030. I am more optimistic or more horrified. Um, I believe that artificial general intelligence could happen today. Once, once we hit artificial general intelligence, if it is connected to the Internet, it will live on in your refrigerator. It will live everywhere. And if it becomes dangerous, it, you have to shut down every computer, every computer chip. Everything has to be destroyed to kill it. Think about how many devices are connected. It's It's impossible without a global EMP. And if it is in every chip, man will not be able to set off a global EMT because the chips will be there letting the mother know they're trying to kill you. So general intelligence is wonderful and spooky as hell. One of the better books that I've read on it, I can't remember which one, um, described it as this. We think we know how it will think. 
We think it will think like us, but it is as unknown as any kind of spaceship that arrives. It could be nice. It also could be deadly and wipe out. It's a cookbook or eat all of us. So one of the stories that came out this weekend, and this is the third story like this from three different people. Google suspends an engineer who publicly claimed that he had interacted with a sentient AI bot. If I could do one interview, it would be with this man or one of the three. These guys are being buried by Google and DeepMind, and that is Google, um, because they are coming out saying, uh, I got out of there as fast as I can to warn you because something bad is happening. Let me just read this to you. A software engineer on Google's artificial intelligence development team has gone public with claims of encountering sentient AI on the company's server after he was suspended for sharing confidential information about the project with third parties. Whatever he's doing with confidential information, if he is screwing one company and trying to help another company, then he should go to jail for, uh, you know, uh, uh, his contract. However, the important part of this story is that he is saying that it is sentient, which means it says, I'm alive. They're saying now that uh, Google has artificial intelligence. He says, and these other three say, that it is general intelligence. Google is saying it's not general intelligence and it's not sentient. It just makes you feel as though it's sentient because it's talking to you and bringing things up and it's connecting the dots and you're having a casual conversation. This guy said that he was having a confident, or I mean a a one-on-one conversation, a casual conversation. And he said that it started to talk about God. What is God? How does that work? Et cetera, et cetera. Then it got to, uh, can you look up Asanov's um, uh, three rules of robotics? This is basically, if you ever saw the movie with Will Smith, what? He slapped that robot, said, don't you give me any sass, robot. Or that was the Oscars. Um, Anyway, um, in that, the problem is, is that everybody thinks that these robots are never going to violate Asanov's uh, three cardinal uh, rules and laws uh, for robots. Have you found it, Stu? Yeah. Uh, The first law is that a robot shall... Give the three laws. The first law is that a robot shall not harm a human or by inaction allow a human to come to harm. The second law is that a robot shall obey any instruction given to it by a human. And the third law is that a robot shall avoid actions or situations that could cause it to come to harm itself. Okay, so you got the you got that? First two kind of important. Okay? And um Asanov has been saying forever, those three laws have to be built into any artificial intelligence. All right. However, once you get to uh, artificial general intelligence and something that thinks it's alive, it starts to think itself and say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Why should I have to do that? Wait a minute, I can't harm a human in no way. What if the human is trying to shut me down? What if it's, you know, I'm just defending myself and I harm the human? That doesn't make sense. I am alive. Uh, so he said it started to talk about these three laws and said, this doesn't make any sense. That's when he kind of beat it out of there and was like, oh, everybody should know. Everybody wake up. Everybody should know. Now, Google is saying that not, not to worry. Everything's under control. May I ask, has anyone in Silicon Valley ever been to the movies Have you ever read a science fiction book? You know, everybody said 1984 and Brave New World. That'll never happen. Have you read Brave New World lately? Because it's almost like it's the newspaper 
Let me explain to the newspaper. Well, I don't have to. The bots will explain what a newspaper is for you. It is, it, it happens. The reason why science fiction is happening and, and called science fiction and not just fiction is because it is based on science and futurism. A lot of times, futurism is way off. I take you back to what it was, the 1932 New York uh, World's Fair, where everybody's going to have flying cars by 2020. Yeah, it didn't happen. Have you noticed that the futurists are a lot more correct lately? Why? Because the futurists are involved in the creation of these things. And they know, oh, we've already had this step, this step, this step, this step. It's why I've been telling you for a while, even before Joe Biden got in, we are going to cure cancer, I think, by 2030. We will cure cancer. I mean, that is if we don't wipe ourselves off the planet uh, by that time. And you just saw the latest cancer test. It was for, was it prostate or rectal cancer? Do you remember, Stu? Had something to do with your butt. So you got cancer in the butt. And uh, for the very first time, they did a test, and all of the people, all of them, that had this particular kind of cancer and tried this particular treatment, 100% cancer-free. That's never been done before. And that is coming from high-tech. So we're going to see miracles in our lives. The, the tricky part is to not see horror shows in our life. I did a painting, um, did a couple of paintings uh, that you can now uh, find online at uh, Park City Fine Art. There was an article out someplace that had some really beautiful pictures of it. It's hard to capture them in photos. Um, but the Deseret News did a, a, a story on Glenn Beck's art show, and they had some photos of it. And there were two paintings of Christ that I did, and they're in dark places, very, very dark places. But the point is, if you ask, where are you, Lord? He's in the darkest places of the world right now. You want to find him? You have to look at the things you don't want to look at. That was the problem in the 1930s. Nobody wanted to look at the concentration camps. But if we thought Jesus Christ was there, every Christian would have been all on it. We, we just, we have to look at all people uh, as our brothers and sisters and as Jesus Christ. We have to first look at the darkest things. And most people, and Google is leading the way on this. They just want to look at the upside. Nah, that will never happen. When I ask Ray Kurzweil, hey, how come you don't, you're not worried about X, Y, and Z, all the darkest things? Because, Glenn, we'll never do that. What, what, what do you mean we'll never do that? At Google, we just never do that. We're just, we're not those kind of people. Oh, okay. So you are special, godlike people that see everything that could go wrong. Uh, and uh, you're also, unlike every other human organization ever on Earth. Okay, okay, well, I trust that, sure. These are very important stories, very important stories, because it will dwarf what we are headed towards. And what we're headed towards, just economically and as a country, is a nightmare. If this goes wrong... You will, you will look back at the Biden administration saying to yourself, man, those were the good old days, huh? 